going to be my actual slave or I will pay them slave wages. There is a lack of justice. But you black man, you black woman, we as a people have never known any type of freedom, just or unjust. We have always been under the laws, the jurisdiction of white folks or racist Caucasian or pink people. I, I gotta, I'm trying to break myself from saying white people because they are not white. In their language, white means pure. In their language, white means holy and righteous, and we know they are not none of those things. That's something they call themselves. In roots, Kutakinte called them Tuba. And the Native American people called them pale face. So why would we give them an honor of calling them something they are not? They call themselves white people. No, you are not white people. You are pink people or you are the racist Caucasian. In fact, that's your name that you call yourself? Caucasian. So I prefer Caucasian. You are not <laughs> white people. <laughs> no, not, no, not here you're not. You've never known freedom. We have never known freedom. See, another thing, you really don't want to be free. No, you don't. You scream black power. You raise your hand up in the air, black power family, black power this, and I'm so Afrocentric. I'm a black nationalist and all that. You are a liar. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Y'all, you're lying. I'm going to tell you why I feel that y'all are telling yourself a lie. You're telling yourself a lie. See, I know you lying. But you're telling yourself a lie. I'm determined, I'm determining that fact not because of what you say. I'm looking at your actions. And all your support and all your, the money that you have, your actions show you are satisfied living the way you are. But you feel better hollering black power. I'm a black nationalist. And you are none of these things. Not in reality. When I was incarcerated, I wanted to be free. And every day people will tell you, I was doing something in order to get free. Every day I was doing something. Then this was brought to my attention. They say, okay, if we set you free today, what you going to do? You have no money. You have nowhere to go. What are you going to do? I told them I will sleep in the ditch in front of this place. That's what I do. I worry about that once I get free of this. Did you hear what I said? I told them point blank and I meant it. I would rather sleep in the ditch in front of this place than actually live in here. Three meals a day. Play basketball. Take showers. I'd rather be nasty, dirty, filthy, and hungry sleeping in a ditch outside. I want my freedom. When you want your freedom, you don't care about where you're going to go. You, you will deal with that after the fact. See, y'all don't understand what freedom really is. Because see, you claim that you want to be free but you want to be comfortable in that freedom. If you really want to be free, there is no comfortability in freedom. That dog, that cat, 
that squirrel, monkey, whatever you have at your house that you have a that pet you have for a slave. If they get free, do you really think and they really want to get out of your house? They want to be out of that aquarium. If they want to be out of that cage, they want to be off of that leash. When they break free from the leash, jump out of the cage. Look, let me tell y'all something. I had fish in an aquarium. They wanted to be free. And they jumped out of the aquarium. They didn't care about dying. Listen, ah. They did not care anything about dying. They did not want to be in that aquarium. When a dog escaped, when a cat escaped, they don't care about what, what they're going to do. They just know, I got to get the hell out of this cage. I got to get the hell out of this aquarium. I got to break this leash. I worry about eating. I worry about being comfortable later on. I got to go. You don't have that type of attitude. You can't leave your Xbox. You can't leave your pretty clothes. You can't leave, you can't leave your big house. And your good job. Because you really don't want to be free. Because y'all ain't suffering. No, you're not. Racist Caucasian people and other folks laugh at you looking at these so called Negroes talking about, I'm mistreated. I'm oppressed. Negro, you got, you got cocaine. You smoke weed. You got a pretty house. You play Xbox, you got a college education, pretty clothes, three or four women. What you talking about? You are oppressed. That's why they laugh at you. You don't, you don't look like a, an oppressed people. The so-called black people, we are the most richest and most comfortable so-called oppressed people ever in history those who really suffered mistreatment and oppression wish they had one tenth of what you have that's why you are institutionalized you are satisfied you are satisfied with all these material things and and you are not like the little fish in the aquarium Willing to jump and die. Because I'd rather be dead than in this tank. The little dog that runs away. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I know I don't want to be on that leash no more. I'm getting out of here. I'd rather sleep in a ditch. Than go back to that place. You don't have that type of attitude. Freedom. In order to gain true freedom, it must be earned. And in order to gain true freedom, you must suffer. And y'all not really ready to do no suffering. Not real suffering. When was the last time that you went to jail for black power? When was the last time you were shot for black power? You're not suffering any type of oppression. Physical oppression. Injustice? Sure. Discrimination? Sure. But apparently, it's not enough to make you say, I'd rather sleep in a ditch. It hasn't got to that point. Y'all look mighty pretty to me. And when... When this racist Caucasian people came to America, it was not comfortable. Many of them died. I, I repeat that again. Many of them died. They suffered. They froze to death. Some of them died horrendous deaths from disease, starvation. Y'all fat as hell. Obese, matter of fact. You eating real good. You doing all this talking. 
but you are really comfortable. You are institutionalized. Incarceration is all that you know. And you're not willing to suffer for your freedom. Because you will be the ones doing all the suffering. Your babies will enjoy the freedom just like the racist Caucasian people. The, the next generation began to enjoy the fruits from the sacrifice and the suffering. Many of the original ancestors of these people, they died. They died and they suffered and sacrificed and they suffered great discomfort trying to get the freedom that they was trying to obtain. You don't want to do nothing. You are comfortable on Facebook and YouTube. And your McDonald's cheeseburgers you eat every day. Y'all fat. And then you talking about I'm suffering, I'm mistreated. Where? You show sure getting a lot enough to eat. How are you suffering? Because if you really want to be free, then you want to let it all go. And you're not. You know how it was when some of y'all left your mother and father's house? Or some of you were in college? You had nothing. But in order to get on your feet, in order to do something for yourself, you had to suffer. As a college student, many of y'all ate many of those Roman ramen noodles, whatever you call them. You ate a lot of cheap food to survive while you were studying. Many of you, when you left your mother and father's house, you had all that used furniture. Everything was used and abused. But see, the thing about it, it's all mine. I'm going to college to improve myself. I'm going to college to improve me. I got my own house. I don't have nothing in it. I'm sleeping on a blow up mattress, but it's mine. See, that's the same type of attitude you have to have when you're seeking true freedom, when you are a true black revolutionary, when you are a true black nationalist. You have to be willing to die. You have to be willing to sacrifice and suffer. But we have not, you have not gotten. I am at that point. I could easily do it. No big deal. Because none of this stuff around me impresses me. None of it. The, there was a movie I watched a little ways back and that movie there was a prison break and this Caucasian man and this black man were chained together and there was a prison riot all kinds of things was going on distraction the Caucasian man did not like the black man the black man did not like the Caucasian man but this was the their only real opportunity to get free. <laughs> this was their only opportunity to get free. So they wanted their freedom. See, they wanted their freedom because prior to going to prison, they knew what freedom was. That's why they really wanted it. See, y'all, the descendants of slaves born in America, the so-called Negro, African-American, you don't have no idea what it was. You, you really don't know what freedom is, so you really don't yearn for it. You satisfied with your privileges that they give you in jail. And you satisfied. But when you know what freedom is, you want to get that back. Believe me. Anybody that's been in jail, incarcerated, they know the difference even though living in, in real society, I mean, in this world, it's almost like being in a jail, incarcerated. But you know the difference between this incarceration 
and the freedom of society so you won't out of there if you have any type of sense. So this black man and this Caucasian man, they decided, look, I don't like you, you don't like me, but we need to get the hell out of here. So they work together for the best interest of them both. And later on, they fall somewhere where they could break those shackles and each man can go his separate ways. But during the process, during the time they were together on the run, they began to see things in each other they didn't realize was there while they was fighting to get free of those physical chains. There's a lesson in it. Do y'all hear the lesson? Do you understand what I'm saying to us? I did not say they were going to be friends and best buddies, but they grew to respect one another because I want my freedom and he wants his freedom. And so there is a mutual respect. Many Caucasian people, they don't have no respect for you. When you say, I want to be free, when you begin to complain about this or that, they don't have no respect to you because they're not shackled to you. They don't understand. They have no idea of what we're going through, how we feel. But see, when that white man, oh, that Caucasian man, I have to keep, have to keep catching myself, but when that Caucasian man was shackled to the black man, they were both in the same type situation. So then that Caucasian man understood really what was going on. And again, like I say, has nothing to do with being best buddies and best friends. But now there's a mutual understanding, mutual respect, because now you see why I want freedom, just like you. Now, see, y'all Afrocentric type people, y'all black nationalists and all this other black stuff, whatever y'all have going on. True freedom brings discomfort. There are many of our so-called leaders. I don't want to talk about the Sambo leaders and the the, the Uncle Tom type leaders, I don't, I don't even want to mention them because they're not a factor. They are incarcerated and they are satisfied in their oppression. They like the little privileges they get. But if you know that separation is the real answer to our problem, if you want to build a new nation, that's those who begin the process, you are going to suffer Great discomfort. Do you understand that? We should have been somewhere a long time ago. We already know that the racist Caucasian people of America are not going to give us any land that we can call our own here. They're not going to do nothing for you because they don't want you to rise to your highest potential. They know how great we really are. So they want to try to do everything they can to hold you back. They're not going to allow you to build a nation in a nation. That's not going to happen. You're always going to have a problem. Now, they might change their mind. Who knows? But so far, they have no intent to help us build a nation or become separate from them. So, If we know this, then your leadership should be seeking land and help from elsewhere. The first thing y'all said, Africa. Let's go back to Africa. Go back to well, first of all, you can't go back to Africa. You've never been there before. The only thing that you know is the United States, and that's what makes things.